everyone, and welcome to War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast. We are coming to you tonight, as always, at a rim far beyond the watchful eyes of the Galactic Empire. And we are live on GetVocal.com and on Facebook Live and on YouTube Live. So check us out there. Uh, and we will be keeping an eye on what is going on over there in Facebook Live and see how. Uh, so if you have any questions, just put them down in the comments. Uh, we'll get to them. Hopefully, uh, some point during the during the show. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, of course, is John Mark Tolly. I am the host of War of the Stars. If you're new here, and joining me as always is my co-host, the Imperial Propagandist himself, Mister Joe Cahill. Hey, how's everybody doing this evening? Oh, uh, I am doing fine. Uh, our other host uh, is not here. He's dealing with some personal issues right now. We wish him the best of luck and um, everything like that. Uh, he's doing good. So uh, Ray will hopefully be back with us next week. Um, we miss him. He's a big part of the show. So we hope to get him back here next week. But it's a movie so nice we had to talk about it twice. We're doing episode three once again. Um, but first, you put out a little bit of news. Um, did you not, Joe? I put out some news. I can read. I think you, was it you or was it? Let me check the. Our handy dandy. Oh yes, uh, the uh, the Mandalorian rumors. Um, the big one is going is that uh, the star of the Mandalorian walked out at one point or tried to walk out. Um, considering the source that I'm hearing this from, I'm taking this with a huge grain of salt. Um, the uh, the source that I that I saw it was from is not necessarily a very reliable source about that, and um, you know until you hear it from until we hear it from the actor himself, um, who's playing the Mandalorian or one of the directors or producers, I take I take very little of that with you know with anything other than eh, it's just rumors you know. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's a rumor. Um, I had seen some, the same thing. I also saw some follow-up where they were, uh, you know, they're finished filming. So why walk out now? Yeah. 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 It's, it's the same thing. You know, why? It, it happens in all fandoms. It's, it's silly. It's silly. Um, I'm not buying it. You're not buying it. I agree. So, you know what? Find something better to do with your lives. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean... We had too many... It's just to stir up more controversy. Mm-hmm. And that's not cool. I'm checking over on the uh, Facebook page, so sorry if I was momentarily distracted. Yeah, so it's okay. Sorry, so am I. I'm sharing this to everybody on in as much as my as many groups as I can. And now somebody's trying to talk. All right. <laughs> What's that? It sounded like somebody was trying to talk. Oh, to me. I heard a phone vibe. Yeah, I was probably my phone was yeah probably giving me notifications. Oh, of everything we're both doing here. <laughs> yes, 
riveting television here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, sorry if I'm a little distracted today. This has been, uh, I'll be honest with you, this has been quite a quite a week, and uh, yeah, I don't know, just kind of feeling the strain of it, and just uh, anyway. All right, let's get to it. Um, yeah, last time we left off, we were still talking about episode three, and well, here we are again, once again, talking about episode three. I realized we needed a lot more time to talk about episode three of, of the few prequels. Yeah, yeah, that of all the ones, that's the one that is the, uh, as we said before, it's considered the the good one, right? Of the of of the of the trilogy of the uh, prequel trilogy. Um, and the one that really pushes a lot of info out at you in the short span of its, you know, from start to yeah. finish. Well, here's another thing that I don't know if we really, I, we didn't really talk about it, but uh, let's kind of talk about this a little bit. The first Star Wars that was PG-13. Right. Um, you know... Um, you know, pushing you know, pushing that that boundary a little bit as far as what they, um, because of the violence, I think that's what gave gave it that pushed it to that rating. Is, um, yes, it's nowhere near like a rated R. Well, a, but a, there were a some lot of complaints you know, in Hollywood right now about the PG thirteen rating, um, mm-hmm. because it's going on everything. Mm-hmm. Instead of, you know, traditional type things are not getting the PG rating they used to get. Uh, the PG rating is very yeah. seldom given out now, even for the animated Disney films and such. It's it's coming out as a 13. Um, yeah. So there's a little bit of talk in there that, that did PG-13 kill the PG rating? Um, mm. is, is it just that the mm. raiders are afraid to give anything that PG thir- that just that plain PG anymore PG rating yeah cuz it won't it's kind of like and I know this is getting off topic but it's kind of like the like you have the two ratings on the either side of it I think directors might be a little bit scared because you give it a PG rating and they they might be worried oh you're just going to get little kids um you know, it's just going to be the little kids. You give it the R rating, and then you're worried, like, oh, is is a mainstream? You're going to get a big mainstream audience to go see this movie being rated R. So I think maybe they're looking at that PG thirteen is like right there in the middle. Like, this is the rating that can give us the most eyes on this movie. Yeah, is a PG thirteen compared to although a movie like Deadpool kind of proven that a R rated movie can make a lot of money. Right. And you know, you know and, given the right directors, don't get much choice in what their rating comes out. Uh, directors, producers, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's done by a, it's a what, separate it's what. group. Uh, you send your film in, and they come back and tell you the, your rating um, is going to be yeah. Uh, you know, Motion Picture Association yeah. of America does that that rating for you, uh, and it's not not inexpensive to send mm-hmm. in and get the rating. Uh, they charge you quite a bit for that. Yeah. Uh, but they're saying they're losing a lot because of that 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 coming out as thirteen on so many things now. Hmm. Hmm. Very, I'll, I'll, I'll put that is info on the page if anybody's interested later. Uh, not won't be a pure Star right, Wars article, cool. but they can they can read up about what's going on with the MPA and those uh, ratings. Yeah. Yeah. We have someone on the an insider, as they say, in the business. Uh, somewhat, it's a little slow for just about all of us right now. Uh, yeah. So I just kicked back and and working scripts and uh, jumping in as a co-producer on a couple of projects just to keep my feet in the water right now. Mm. Which mm. I'm ready to start. Well, let's talk. <laughs> yeah. Well, getting back to uh, episode three, um, let's talk a little bit about the one thing we didn't really t- hit on was the performances in episode three. And were there anyone's any particular actor that really stood out for to you as like 
was the best in this movie. Because uh, I know I have mine as the one who really stood out, but I want to know. Oh, I know who you're. Uh, from you being a, <laughs> I can probably get yours. <laughs> Hello there. Okay. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> and you did not pass the test when I said that. When I, we got on before we got on before we got online, you did not pass the test. Oh. I need I need your Star Wars credentials. I need your Star Wars card back. Sorry. As long as I get to keep my imperial. When you say hello there, (laughs) okay, I will let you keep that. No, when someone says hello there, the correct answer is General Kenobi. (laughs) General Kenobi, we be together. Kenobi. Uh, Ah, the negotiator. I would probably have to say (coughs) for your question. It's it's going to be a toss up between Ewan McGregor and uh, mm. even the shorter, even though he had a short sections, uh, Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson. Yeah. I also, I mean, anytime you get uh, Ian McDermott is oh yeah, well, um, always really, I mean, amazing. Right. You know, that's just amazing a freebie. actor. That's yeah. <laughs> Um, and and really, but you in this one, you're starting his the role. He oh, he was. Two, this is but, this. Yeah, this one was just a great performance. This is this is for me when he became Obi Wan. You know, and this movie is like is like okay, he's Obi Wan now. Right. From now on, that's um, that's who I see as as Obi Wan. Right. I think they all. I mean, I think they all kind of did a lot, a, a lot better job with the when it came to the acting. Um, I thought Hayden Christensen was was a lot better in this one. A little more relaxed. A um, little more relaxed. A little more. Um, they, you know, because they've been doing this for a yeah, while, they so they kind of. I think they all kind of got comfortable. They, they gave him an impossible role to play. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you play? He he came across as real whiny, and you know mm-hmm. maybe that's what the director and everybody yeah. were telling him to do. But uh, you know, I sometimes look at the lines and just I would love to see a, a a more established actor maybe take some of those lines and just present them out and, in in a different format. Yeah, than not quite so whiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh and. You also had the the issue that you're trying to condense the story down to two hours. You know, you're trying to condense it from him going from being this hero to, you know, basically Darth Vader. You're trying to tell that story of his fall within a limited, you know, time, time span that you don't have with, say, a medium like. And I think that's, you know, an issue that a lot of movies you have to work with a lot of movies that have these type of stories where you have a person who goes from hero to villain of condensing that story down that you may not have in say like a TV series where you have multiple seasons to tell that story. You have to condense that down and tell that story. And you also have a time jump from episode two to episode three. Um, because in between that time period, you had the entire Clone Wars happening. So you had all these things happening, all this stuff going on that you don't see, that you just have to infer from what is said of what had happened in between from the end of episode two to what's going on in episode three. You know, it's inferred that. Obi Wan and Anakin had these adventures and had these battles that they were together and doing all this stuff together. You know, that's just inferred. Um, but you know, you just have to, as the audience, you just have to, you know, take it as like, oh, okay, yeah, they had all these adventures, they went on all this, all these battles, they fought, you know, they fought together and beside each other and everything like that. Um, and, but you don't really get to see right. that. Uh, yeah, and that could have been a little more uh, looked at, I think. 
to add yeah. 15 or 20 minutes to the storyline to help smooth it, mm-hmm. I don't think would have been a problem. You know, it would cost, you know, several million more dollars to do. Oh, yeah. But it yeah. never hurts. I mean, and that, that is, yeah. I mean, that is one thing that, like, the, the Clone Wars, the Clone Wars was able to do was, you know, tell those stories and kind of, Fill in the fill in the the blank of what happened between episode two and episode three, um, but for a lot of people, for the casual viewer, you know, this is what they're going to see as the movies. Right. So everything that needs to be told in the story needs to be told in the movies, and then the shows, the books, the comics are are all just fillers to fill in, fill everything in. Um, to add texture to it. But, you know, a good movie should be one that you don't need to have that other stuff for the movie to be, to tell the whole story. Um, that's just, that should just be extra. And, I mean, do you think that, that episode three did that? Do you think that it told a complete story of Anakin's fall and how he fell? Or do you think that the fall... Did the fall come out of nowhere? Um, no, they, they, did, Was it they just... did a reasonable job of building up to it. Um, yeah. And that was what we were talking about before. In order to do that, speed it up, mm-hmm. I think they had to make Anakin more whiny than they would have if they'd taken a little more time. Um, you know, it was... And, of course, that's what it is to be a you know, fallen, is me, 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 me. Uh, Everything's about yourself and what your wishes are, your wants and needs. And uh, in that respect, Hayden Christensen did really well. Yeah. Uh, where yeah. did we leave off? Oh, I, I. Um. I think we were at Order sixty six. Uh, there's a few other things that we kind of skipped over that I would like to. Right. One of the things I would want to I want to kind of talk about is one of the deleted scenes. Um, it's there's a deleted scene in there that shows uh, basically the beginning of what would become the Rebel Alliance, and it is a you see a meeting, and I believe it is before. It's before Order 66, and it is Padme meeting with uh, Bela Organa and um, Mon Mothma, and they're talking about organizing sort of a a, uh, resistance in the Senate to what Palpatine was doing, and that they were going to form sort of like a uh, opposition. The loyal opposition Um, kind of a thing position type of a thing um decided not to use um although the the actress that played mon mothma in that scene even though she was not in the actual you know ended up being cut from that did end up reprising the role in um rogue one she played mon mothma in rogue one so that was kind of a, yeah, uh, a very good job of, of being the younger. But I mean, they yeah. cut it for time. They they do a lot of the time cut. Yeah, uh, they cut it for. Yeah, they cut it for time. It they cut it for uh, uh, for other. How yeah? How did it did flow? Suddenly, did it, did they go in or, with the you know with feel the like story. The story's really moving, and we do this scene. It's oh, we've now slowed things way down. Yeah, and then if you go right back into an action, yeah. Uh, and high high intensity, you're gonna you might lose a, quite a bit in between high intensity, high you know high volume. Let's let's give it all mm-hmm. uh, clips there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we left off with uh, Order sixty six and the um, the fight between. Uh, Mace, and of course we have the initial attack of the now revealed Sidious um, taking out all those Jedi Masters in the blink of an eye and 
this is one thing, one one place where I think the novelization and other media really enhances the story because you know, there's only so much they could do with that scene to show just how fast Palpatine was moving in that instance. And the book gives the impression that he was moving so f- he was basically a blur of light, a blur of, of, of red light. Um, he was moving so fast that no one was able to see him. Like the other Jedi were just unable to even see him. He was moving so fast. Um, so I think that's one thing where the book kind of adds to that, you know, cause we see as like, well, you know, he doesn't look like he's moving that fast to us, but we're seeing it from a different right. And if you point, stop and think about it from, as, from this, across as they the might room, say in Star boom, Wars, and you've got a bunch of Jedi masters laying there dead. Uh, you know, it, 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 yeah, that was basically what it would have been. And, like. and it, it happens like, close boom, to they're dead in order to show it though. And then they had to slow things down, but it still, you know, was just yeah. wildly fast as far as taking out Jedi yeah. masters. Yeah. And uh, what's the joke I heard online? It was something like, in uh, in all fairness, how do you prepare yourself for a crazy man doing a complete 360 in midair coming towards yeah. you screeching? You know, I mean, how do you prepare for that? Just ah! could break you up a bit. <laughs> um, it could. Um, then we got the, you know, the duel between Mace and um, Palpatine or Sidious at this point. And it cuts between Mace, Mace fighting uh, Palpatine, and then you see Anakin in the chamber, in the council chamber, waiting. And then finally, he's had enough, and he goes, and then you have the confrontation, where Sidious is down, Mace is standing over him. And we kind of talked about this before, but do you think that was a calculated risk by Palpatine? Um, to hold, did he did he think that did he kind of know that eventually Anakin would come back? You know, he planted that seed that seed in his head of "I can save your mother." Did he think that Anakin would be back, and so he was just holding off until Anakin came, and? Thinking that okay, I'm going to put myself in a position where I, Anakin I has to make a choice. He just saw the opportunity. Or do you think? Uh, because Anakin, yeah. you know, hmm. fought first arrival. Was it? Was it turning? He, he was the one who wanted to adhere to the Jedi code. No, uh, at that point. And, yeah, uh, I think at that right then is when Palpatine said, "Oh, I know what I'm going to pull." Yeah, because hmm. I know there's been a theory that you know he that Palpatine basically let Windu win that match. That at any point Palpatine could have turned it on and defeated Windu at any point in time, but he was just stalling for time and just waiting for Anakin to return because he thought that once Anakin returned. He could then turn on, you know, the charm, so to speak, or turn, you know, turn on whatever he needed to, and convince Anakin to to turn at that point. But I mean, I see your point of view too. That you know, like we've talked about before with Palpatine, he always had a mm-hmm. plan within a plan within a plan. So it's always hard to any tell. you know whatever the out. Yeah, with Palpatine, it is always hard hard to tell exactly what. Um, I do think that, like we talked about last week, it was almost a perfect storm with Mace being the, the master that was left behind. That was like the, for, you know, depending on your point of view, that was best case scenario or worst case scenario to have Mace Windu be... The, that ma- the master that was left behind and not say like an Obi-Wan or a mm-hmm. Yoda. Um, but well, and I think um, you know, by which units, then of course, off, we, planet as well. Uh, 
uh, you know, yeah. Yoda suddenly goes to Kashyyyk. Oh, yeah, because each Jedi was assigned. So, you know, it'd be easy. You don't even yeah. have to say, you know, General Kenobi, you and your unit go here. You just say, uh, you know, the designation number of the unit that, that Kenobi, the general of. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I, I I used to, I know, because I, I, I don't remember. I think it was the uh, 80, the eighty second was Obi-Wan's, but I could be wrong. Because I know, of course, everyone knows what Anakin's Oh, right. The, unit the glorious was. 501st. The 501st. Yeah, the glorious 501st. The 501st. <laughs> um, the glorious 501st. Vader's fist. Um. But then we have, you know, the final confrontation where he um, chops off Windu's arm and Windu gets sent through a window. Right. Yeah. And it's both it's both hands, right? Uh, yeah. Because I thought Windu's uh, his grip two handed at that point. No. And when they show Windu going out, both hands. He was holding it too. He was holding it like that. Then he lifted up. To strike him down, and that's when okay. the arm, the hand gets cut off. I think it's just and, one hand. Uh, um, great scene, and that, and then it gets the force. And you immediately force know that that is uh, part of the setup. Oh yeah, with the fame, with the with the great line of unlimited power. Right. Too. Uh, and and I still like yeah. my star my theory um, that but, Windu's not dead. What's that? Windu's not dead. I like that one uh, too. Yeah, he, he, he was a powerful Jedi Master. Yeah, he went out the yeah. window from the Force lightning, uh, but he was making noise still. I mean, heck, we've seen we've seen people cut in half, right, and come back. So I'm thinking. We've seen people with one hand fall, yeah, and, and survive it. Luke, yeah. hello, um, yeah. So, the, yeah. and and Luke wasn't nearly the Jedi. And I know Sam yeah. Jackson himself and, has. You know, that's the first Jedi yeah. I've been power. And, yeah, Sam Jackson himself has even said, "Yeah, I could be, I could be back." Yeah. Uh, yes, which would be great. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think that they could take it to another direction and now with, 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 with Mace Windu returning after uh, the final, uh, the, the sequels. Um, because, mm. you know, you don't have a Skywalker anymore, except for Ray, and he could, he could start leading mm. it in a whole different direction away from the Sky, Skywalker trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah, there's all kinds of ways yeah. you can go, go with that as far as, um, or even even, you know, a darker, you know, um, you know, maybe I have a storyline where Windu right. turns to the dark side. I mean, he's already a Jedi that skirted that line, and that could have been the thing that you know, sitting the entire order slaughtered now, before your before. Now, you know, yesterday, before, I you know, saw a. Uh amazing fan film and I'll have to go back and find it and post it over to the pages, but it was what if, um, the order 66 hadn't worked, which we've semi talked about. Um, Star Wars theory. Where, yes. where the Jedi actually stopped. Yes. I saw yeah, that. And, I know, saw that captured, one too. Uh, Anakin and lock up Darth Vader, uh, Palpatine's killed, mm -hmm. uh, because it's Yoda who shows up with the other four Jedi masters and not Mace. Uh, and, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, some some great additions there, and of course our long held theory, um, Darth Jar Jar. Yeah. Yes, Darth Jar Jar. End, I like that. At know, the somebody end. somebody's Darth helping Jar -Jar. escape. Darth Vader escape, and it opens up, and it's Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Darth Binks. Darth Binks. Darth Binks. Darth Binks. So, if you get a chance, go watch that. I mean, some of those uh, fan videos are. Uh, uh, amazing, yeah. but I I, I um, still think Jar Jar's got a show back. And on. that that guy, yeah, uh, and that guy in particular, we've talked about him before. Um, Star Wars theory, 
he's got some great, especially you go back to some of his early videos. Uh, he did a lot of uh, he did a lot of stuff like that of what if this had happened, and a lot of them dealt with episode three. And um, well, well, let's go right now. Let's talk about um, Jar Jar. I don't know if, if you the know, battle. Uh, yeah, if you the fight on Mustafar. The, uh, uh, the old Saturday Night Lives. Um, they did a parody of Ronald Reagan, where he's doing the, oh, okay, hi, mm -hmm. yes, I love everybody, the world's a happy place, and we're off air, Mr. President, and suddenly the walls to the Oval Office vanish, and he's in this control room where he's just, like, Mr. Dictator, and giving all these orders, and brilliant, and then it's back to the, oh, we have the society of such and such visiting you, Mr. President. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to see that to be Jar Jar what what he is behind the scenes yeah or yeah and that could be fun maybe people would actually yeah. like him yeah. <laughs> like him for being evil you know, the, the whole voice nah. goes, the whole accent goes away and mm -hmm. <laughs> you know he's talking the destruction of the jedi <laughs> that could be fun but yeah there most of only only if it only if it's like a only if it goes away and it's like a posh english accent yeah, it makes Three PO sound like like a, it goes from like the Jamaican to yeah make, makes three PO sound like a peasant with his English accent. <laughs> he starts using the royal we and <laughs> we are not amused. Plagius has blown it. <laughs> Sidious has blown it. I find I must take action myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's, yeah, wow. now mind mind blown. Um, you know he. I don't know if blown is the right word, but <laughs> well, I mean, think about it. He could be sitting um, there discussing, you know, that Sidious continually wastes the, the these wonderful apprentices. Yeah, mm -hmm. forget the rule of two. That law was not made by anybody important. <laughs> We need all the Sith we can get. Um, but let's head to Mustafar. Uh, yes, Mustafar. You know, I've told the story on, on here before. Uh, <coughs> I heard this uh, storyline as Darth Vader and Obi-Wan having a fight in the heart of a volcano back in 1978. Hmm. Uh, from the man himself, Mr. George Lucas, sitting at the kitchen table of his godmother who lived across the street from my family. So that story was there, and I waited for it and waited for it and waited for it, and it finally hit the screens. Uh, he was sneaky because he didn't say a thing about it being Anakin. It was Darth Vader, yeah. and he was still thinking? leaving the... That there's well, two separate people at that point. I'm not sure he'd even put the two together yet. Yeah. Um, I mean, but I mean, technically he wasn't wrong though, because at that point he had right. become Darth right. Vader. Um, he had he had been he had been christened already as Darth Vader. And um I think we need to kind of before we get to that, I think we need to kind of back check a little bit and go to um, Anakin or Vader at this point. Um, and, you know, the, the you know, Order 66 itself and Vader going into the temple and, you know, killing, killing the Jedi, killing the younglings. And, I know, because that is such a great scene of the march. Um, the, the march of the 501st. Oh, I love that. Going up, going up into the temple and just, oh, uh, um, but you know, talk about the toll that that had to, um, to take and how that was a calcul. That was another thing that I think was calculated by, by, by Sidious because he knew that doing that would just bring him further and further and further until he was in a position where he couldn't well, get and, out as far as, you know, and going he, if you look like it, his whole, 
explanation for all of it was the Jedi were trying to seize power. He could not leave that temple yeah. standing if that was his true, you know, belief. He had to at least try to arrest yeah. everybody. And to the citizens of the capital yeah. city, you're seeing and he knew fire. that they were you're seeing the Jedi temples on fire. And you know, earlier a bunch of stuff happened over in the Chancellor's chambers. Uh kind of leads you in the right direction for his propaganda machine. Oh, yeah. And I think this is another place where, especially in the last season, this last season of Clone Wars, that they really did a good job of showing the the overall population's view of the war and view of the Jedi and how they'd become, they'd sort of get viewed as... Um, the whole war is being going to be viewed as a Jedi war. This is the Jedi war. This isn't our war. Why are we mm -hmm. fighting this war? Um, and, you know, this kind of resentment and hatred for the Jedi. You're, you're, start, you're starting to see that. And the, the Clone Wars TV series really showed, especially, like I said, this last season, really showed that, that the Jedi weren't viewed as the heroes. They were and no longer the, the guardians and protectors. You know, no, they, yeah, they were viewed with suspicion. And so it was very easy for Palpatine to say, look, look what they did. And right. for people to believe it. Um, you know, but um, there, the one scene in this one that I think really gets me is after he slaughtered the, he's gone to Mustafar and he has slaughtered the, um, the council, um, the separatist council, and you see that single tear going down his eyes that you realize that, you know, he knows what he's doing is wrong, but he doesn't think he has any other it's choice. volcanic dust, man. You know. It was volcanic dust. What's that? Oh, yeah. It would, yeah, I'm sure. What tear? I think that's just rebel propaganda. <laughs> um yeah. Rebel propaganda. Uh, tier? No, he was. No, there was no tear there. It was just a reflection off of his new pretty yellow eyes. <laughs> um. Well, let's get to the to the battle. I mean, to that fight, and you know everything well, that you know, led up to that. Lands, of uh, he's happy to yeah. see her and. Uh, and actually, if you note, the eyes are normal. No. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the question. Let's say Obi-Wan doesn't get on, doesn't stow away on that ship. It's just Padme. What do you think happens? Um, do you think, that, do you think yeah, that Padme... Was a, that was a turning moment. That was like the chance to recover. Yeah. Recovering back to the light side. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, Obi Wan stepping off of the ship, brings, yeah, brings in into that a very new um, feeling of pure jealousy. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it was. I think that was, you know, he was very possessive of Padme and the thought of anyone possessing else. her or being with her or yeah possessing her with her and then, and in the betrayal do you think that was the moment brought him to destroy him uh, that, yeah. that was a combination of two very hard yeah. high high intensity emotions uh, jealousy and betrayal so here's so here's the question when did he fully turn to the dark side was it, or did he ever fully turn to the dark side? Was it when he knelt before Palpatine and said, "I will join, I will join you and be your apprentice," or was it at this point? When he forced, or was it some when he other point? Choked Padme. Yeah, because at that point, the one thing he was using to justify no longer mattered to him. Mm -hmm. Because she was a traitor and everything else too in his eyes. And, yeah, and you know his whole justification for everything he was doing was to save Padme. 
Um, yep. So, and of course, and I that, still think that's Obi-Wan, gone. And, it, and I still think Obi Wan blew it. You know, instead of let her go, Anakin, he should have intervened a, a, a bit more physically yeah. with either the first force or his force. saber. Um, you know, you, you don't let a senator just sit there with with twin babies and get choked out. Come on. <laughs> Not very noble of Choked you. Out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, I disagree with this. Let her go, Anakin. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they're, they're um, going. But yeah, that, that that fight in of, of yeah, the most amazing, well, second most uh, amazing duel of uh, the prequels. Because now I know a lot of people give it. Um. The one thing that the one thing that I hear a lot of people criticize it about is that it's too overly choreographed. That it's like a dance. Well, you know um, what? That's like you know that's that's the one criticism I said. It's like a chore- It's yeah, too choreographed. You know if, 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 that if it's you not realistic. Two Zen masters battle it out in the back. Di- you know, in the old days, it would probably look like a choreographed dance. Because the whole thing yeah. is, is they're both using everything they have. They're both 100% experts. So, and, and Jedi are just like, you know, a lot of the old Japanese swords masters. They're thinking multiple steps ahead. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, I don't yeah. feel it was too choreographed. I feel it was more a matter of <laughs> they were just blindingly fast fighting it out for, for who's going to finally get that one moment of advantage. Mm-hmm. And I mean, watching this and to me, this fight informs what will come later with episode four or star Wars, the battle, the battle on the death star. And, you know, you watch this duel and then when, then when you watch their duel on the death star, you can look back at this one and you can be like, okay, now I know the backstory. Now I know the history between these two. I know what happened in that last duel. And I know why Vader is might be a little bit, uh, have a little bit of trepidation. Mm-hmm. And I know, you know, you know, he's probably looking at it like, okay, the last time I fought this guy, he chopped off both my arms and legs. Right. I'm not going to let that happen. You know, I can't let that more happen defensive. again. I have to, I have to be, you know, be and a if, and more defensive, really watch more and cautious. Take that duel apart in in uh, Star Wars seventy seven. Obi Wan is actually the winning, winning through most of that duel. Vader hmm. is falling back. Yeah. Uh, if you watch, it, it's until Obi Wan basically opens himself up, you know, wide open after seeing Luke. And Vader's like, yeah. ah, I have you now. But then you kind of think he's questioning mm-hmm. with, with the way the body vanished. Uh, was that intentional? Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, actually- yeah. There was, he, you had that look of like, is this right. a trick? Uh, because, I, you know, he had yeah. me. He was the one in control of the duel. Why would he do this? Um, yeah. Well, of course, the answer is that Obi Wan had no intention of winning. He had no intention of leaving leaving the Death Star. Right. His whole whole purpose of that duel was just to stall mm-hmm. for time. Um, whereas you can see in the duel of Mustafar, he was very much trying to win that right. duel. I think, and I think the whole thing is he, he, he was he makes he, that decision though when he sees Luke of not not escaping yeah um, himself, and he realizes mm-hmm. he can use this the same way Palpatine did use Mace Windu. Mm-hmm. Because instead of he ends up basically making sure that Luke doesn't go to the dark side. Right there. Because he yeah. channels mm-hmm. Luke's anger away from actually dark. It was a good feeling even though it was anger it was coming from love. And yeah. Anakin had really lost that love yeah. for Padme at that point. Uh, so mm-hmm. maybe it's something he learned because of fighting Anakin. You know, maybe that was one of my mistakes. Uh, 
I, I didn't get the emotion to come from love losing the person. Um, it was more of she was taken away already in, in yeah. Anakin's eyes. And I'm sorry, how yeah. could you not choreograph the fight anyway on all those little grav vehicles? And <laughs> Oh, yeah, it was... It's, it's definitely one of my, like you said, probably the yeah, second. I best still fight. go back to the best duel ever um, is uh, Obi Wan and Qui Gon against oh, yeah. Maul. That that yeah. is yeah a thing of beauty. Um, that mm. probably the best thing. About this one, I think. I think this one had. I think that the 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 two differences between that one and this one is this one had much more emotion to it. This one had that grit and you know that down and dirty gritty. You could feel the passion between um, these two because these two, you know, if you you know watched, if you've seen all the movies, you understand and what had been told. These two were brother had been brothers. They've been and, and even now, know, Anakin or Obi Wan is trying to 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 turn him. So you know mm -hmm. maybe that's it. He's just going full defensive, and in an effort to prolong it and try to turn well, him back, you know, because he's reminding well, you of everything. You were my brother. Um, you were supposed to, you know, protect the force. Yeah. You were the chosen one. Yeah. Telling you, you know, remember yeah. who you are. Uh, but, you know, yeah. You know, but I mean, then again, you talked about defensive and that was Obi-Wan's right. fighting style. Um the different, you know, different fighting styles. His fighting style was, if you look at, you know, the description of his fighting style, I believe he did form th three. I'd have to look it up, but I think he did form three or four. I'm sure someone in the uh, comments somewhere later on will correct us if we're wrong, but um, it was a strictly defensive form. In fact, it said, it says in the, the form the description of the form that, that form has absolutely zero offensive moves. It is strictly defensive. And um, Mace Windu himself said that he was not only a master of that form, Obi-Wan was the master of that form, that there was no one better at that form than Obi-Wan. And, you know, the whole form was based on the idea of you just you just block, block all the attacks, de defend, 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 until your opponent either wears out or makes a mistake. Or, and then you you make a mistake he makes a mistake and then you go in for the kill. And which is what happened. Now this is now yeah. Now there is one thing and um we talked about the kind of what ifs and this is one that um the guy who did the uh the video you were talking about earlier did he did on one on a particular scene on the Battle of Mustafar and what would have happened if some if things had gone differently. And it's the particular scene is they're fighting and Obi-Wan has the line of Anakin, Chancellor Palpatine is evil. Why can't you see that? And Anakin answers with, from my point of view, the Jedi are evil. Right. In the movie, Anakin Obi-Wan has the line of, well, then you are lost. This, this guy, this is one thing I want to uh, want to kind of present to you of what if at that point Anakin had, or Obi-Wan had tried to enter into dialogue with Anakin and said, what do you mean? And said, how, what do you mean? What do you mean? The Jedi are evil. How do you come to that conclusion? And maybe try to get Anakin to say, well, this is why I think, and even if it's just for a split second to get Anakin off of that, I'm going to kill you to be like, you know, have a dialogue and figure out like, okay, what is going on? You know, why do you think that way? How do you, how did you come to that conclusion? Do you think Anakin would have listened to, started to listen to him or, or do you think at that point Anakin was in such a rage that he would have just. Yeah. And I think Obi-Wan realized that. Which is which is why we got the line. Then you were truly lost, um, and he realizes yeah. I'm going to have to kill my best friend. 
Yeah. Uh, and, and if you notice, his fighting style yeah. gets a little bit more aggressive. <laughs> yes. At that point. Yeah. For, for, for Obi-Wan's defensive style. And then, of course, we get the, mm-hmm. the, the higher ground. And Yes, the high ground. And, and, and what's really nice is there are some fan theories out there. And I think one or two uh, fan films where they do relate this back to the first, the duel from episode one. Episode one. And, mm. and that Obi-Wan knows exactly how to defeat this leap, this force leap because he did it. And he knew that Anakin was going to do it because Maul, he did it to Maul. Maul. And so yeah. he knew how to defeat it. And yeah. if you know how he held his lightsaber. Um, it was mm-hmm. we were back up more of aggressive stance because he knew exactly how yeah. he had to do what he had to do to defeat it which is uh, to kind of go forward it's really interesting that you know he learns all these things from you know what, from remembering different duels he's been in because he does the same thing with Maul when he fights Maul later on in Rebels um, Maul goes in for basically to. So the scene is they're in the desert and they're getting ready. They're in their they're in their stance and Obi Wan's in his um, starts out in the stance that he used in Episode Two or Episode Three with the over the hand right. like that when he was fighting when he's getting ready to fight Grievous. Then he changes into Qui Gon stance right. from Episode Two. So Maul tries to do the exact same thing he did with Qui-Gon to hit, punch, and then, right. you know, stab like that. Well, Obi-Wan blocks it and cuts right through Maul's lightsaber right down the chest of Maul, killing him, you know, killing him right, right then and there. Um, so I think it was interesting how he was, you know, always studied, you know, mistakes that other, you know, maybe that somebody else had made to figure out like, okay, I'm not going to make that mistake. If I'm put in that position again, I'm not going to make that mistake. Now I know how to defend against right. that. Um, but uh, anyway, getting back to episode three, you have, like you said, you have the higher, the high ground and that just, if you're a Star Wars fan, you know it's you know you know it had to come to this, but I think it was still pretty gut wrenching, you know, especially if you're putting yourself in universe into Obi Wan's feet, you know right. Obi Wan's you know feet, so to speak, and you just killed you just you know you think you just killed your best friend, and you know I know he's you know people have cri- I've heard people criticize the fact that he left he left Anakin right Anakin there. That he could have easily have you know used the force to lift him out of the lava, and taken him back. And he was leaving him to die. You know, and yeah. that's he just couldn't bring himself to do that final act uh, of just just killing yeah. him. Yeah. Um, but he also yeah. wasn't going to do anything to help him from that yeah. point. Yeah, in his mind, he'd made up his own. He'd made up his own mind and. He basically left his fate to the force. Right. And, you know, I think that was, do you think that was, I mean, the right move? Um, well, I do because, you know, Vader needs. To... Yeah, of course. Yeah. You got Vader from that. Yes, of course. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think it was the right move for him following the will of the living force. Uh, I think he, he he came to understand Qui-Gon just a bit more at that moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And said, okay, I'm, this is what the Living Force wants. Shuts off his lightsaber. And... Makes his yeah. comments and then moves on. Leaves. Yeah. Because even um, Palpatine is surprised when he gets there and Anakin is still alive. Um, Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, he didn't believe there was any way a Jedi would leave a Sith Lord alive. 
Yeah. You know that. And I mean, at that point, I think Anakin Anakin was alive basically on on rage and hate alone. Right. He was just drawing his, the force. His, his hate purely to keep him alive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because... Yeah. Pull, call, pulling on the dark side. You know, all that rage and anger and hatred yeah. was what was sustaining him for for that period of time. Um. And you get, of course, you get these the scene with Padme in labor. You know, kind of spliced together with scenes of um, Vader being put into the suit. And it was kind of a, an interesting juxtaposition of it was almost like you're seeing new life being brought, you know, a bur- death and life together. You know, you have Luke and Leia being born and basically the last vestiges of Anakin being locked away. Um, And and you and I have touched on this before. Uh, Palpatine purposely did not allow them to heal Anakin the right way. Mm -hmm. Because he knew Mm -hmm. that pain. He wanted that. That lifetime of pain was going to keep him angry. Um, Because where Anakin was, he needed a respirator for his life support. Mm-hmm. You could have stuck him in Bacta, is my opinion. And he chose not to. Oh, yeah. Um, and, of course, I'm sure he came up with some big story later on why he couldn't put him in Bacta. But we've seen some pretty good... Bacta's pretty amazing stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, it won't regrow a whole limb, mm-hmm. but it will heal what's there. No. And, you know, even if yeah. you just had Bacta circulating through the suit <coughs> would have helped. Mm-hmm. And it could be changed yeah. out and all that. So that's part of his deal. Mm-hmm. There. Of course. You- I was a little disappointed in the Frankenstonian. Uh, I mean, I know it was done for oh. effect. Yeah. But in the books that followed, the Legends, even though Vader felt clumsy, everybody else thought he moved with grace for something so huge, somebody so large. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, he he was clumsy to himself because I like, like I can't do everything I used to be able to do in battle. Battle, yeah, yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to, you know, since we're talking about fan theory, you know, we've talked about some fan theories and some fan movies is the idea that. You know, people kind of make fun of the whole with Padme, she died of sadness. Um, but one of the theories that I've heard is that Palpatine was basically draining life force from her to give it to Vader. That he was using the force, he was basically the reason why Padme died is because Interesting. He was draining the life force out from it's here, theory, from her, he in putting it into I think Vader. he would have known Vader. the children lived then. Yeah, this is this is true uh, because is true. their life forces would have separated uh, from the one he was drawing on, and I think he would have gone, "Whoa, mm-hmm. wait a minute, who's got the babies?" Uh, yeah, I, you know, the dying of sadness thing. People are like, "That's a hokey thing," but I totally believe in it. I have seen couples uh-huh. that have been together for, you know, 50, 60 years. Um, and one of them, did, you know, gets something and gets worse and worse and then passes away. And the other one who was completely yeah. healthy follows along within months. And I seriously think that's a broken heart. Um, it's just too much for them to, yeah. to I, I can't live with this. Uh you know, I've seen that too many times. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you yeah. can tell, you know, by the how unhappy they are. And it's it, it's completely possible to die from sadness, if you ask me. Yeah. Um, I also one thing I do I I really appreciate about that whole whole thing is I thought it was cool that uh Hayden Hayden insisted that he be in the suit. Um 
that it's you know he didn't ask for a stunt double or anyone else. He wanted to be. Yeah, and he in wanted the that suit. mask to go over his face, and which would become Anakin Skywalker's face. face. Become yeah. Vader. Yeah. So. Um, uh, well, we are wow, at the one hour mark. We just hit the one hour mark. <laughs> I know. Uh, Ray's going to make it um, this episode before we're done with it because we haven't even made it to Yoda. <laughs> when you really oh, think about it, uh, uh, this we I this, know there's so, so much, much in this one, uh, so many little invariances know, and nuances to discuss and work out. Uh, this might be one we have to come back yeah, to later. Is, um, you know, we might have to. We'll say well. So yeah, much we can talk about. We to, where we all three have to review the two episodes before we talk again. Yeah. So what's yeah. next week's topic? Uh, well, next week we are going to be starting the beginning of the end of our look at the movies by looking at uh, the sequel trilogies with the start with a look at The Force Awakens. Um, and we're going to be going through the sequels starting next week. Oh, okay. Uh, Force, Force away. Sorry. <laughs> I yeah. still love it. It's still Star Wars, folks. Uh, that was just a joke. It's still Star uh, Wars. Anything Star Wars is yes. worth it. Yes. Uh, if we all get mm -hmm. that attitude of, I hated that, we might not get any more Star Wars, so stop it. I know. I know. Uh, anyway, um, with that out of the way, Let's do it like we always do it. Uh, Joe, where can people find uh, you? you? Find me on Facebook under Joe Cahill, director, producer, or STEM, STEM, Steam House Entertainment, also on Facebook. Uh, you'll find us over on YouTube and Instagram and, and Twitter as well. Please check out some of my upcoming projects. Uh, Last Battleship um, is on Facebook, has a great page. And then it looks like we're going to go ahead and start putting back work into uh, – a horror sci-fi, the fifth legion. So check it all out. And then you can always find me here or at the, uh, one crit blunders, fifth edition D and D podcast. All right. And as always, you can, if you want to get in touch with the show, uh, best way to do that is through email. You can email us at war of the stars one at gmail.com. Or join the Facebook page. Uh, just look up "Where the Stars." That is the name for both the Facebook page and the group. We're going to be start. And I always know I always say this, but we are we are going to start doing more stuff on the page and more stuff in the group. Um, we mean it. It's going to happen. Patreon.com. Yeah, um, <laughs> one of these days. Um, Patreon.com. We are still trying to get that first twelve people in. For the contest, if you're one of the first twelve to enjoy to to become a Patreon, you could get a chance to win a twenty dollar gift certificate. Um, but we need people to join. So, if you want cool swag, potential for cool swag, hook it up and join Patreon, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, if you don't like Patreon, we can also support us on Anchor, Anchor.fm forward slash war of the stars and hit the support tab. We are live every week as always right here on get vocal. Just go to getvocal.com, sign up and look for our page. Just type in war of the stars, the star Wars podcast, and you'll be to find, find us there and see what our shows are. We are live every Wednesday night at 9 PM. Central Standard Time. That is what time? 7 p.m. Pacific? Pacific. 7 p.m. Pacific. So check us out live. We would love to have you. Love to have the uh, feedback. Uh, that'll be the same on Facebook Live too. Um, if that's easier for you guys to do, check us out on Facebook Live at the same time. And Twitter. Where the Stars won. Uh, also, don't forget uh, October coming up soon. We are me and Brian Miller from the Star Wars Canon podcast are going to be doing a starting a Mandalorian after show called that was the way um, it's going to be every week. Uh, 
the day following the release of the episode of The Mandalorian, we're going to be talking about it. And myself and Brian Miller are going to be talking about it. So that should be fun. Uh, That's going to be YouTube exclusive, that one right there. Um, We're working on getting the YouTube channel set up and getting Facebook pages set up and everything like that. So keep an eye out for that. Should be a lot of fun. I think think that's about it. I do too. And as always, remember, this isn't just my Star Wars. This isn't just your Star Wars. This is our Star Wars. Until next time, may the Force be with you.